I think this might be the best kit of 2021 and 2022. Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. Today we're taking a first look, run, and review of the new Vanquish VS410 Phoenix. And here it is. This is a great looking truck. I'm, uh, I may be a little biased towards some of the Vanquish products, products, yes, but uh, I do have to say that this is probably one of the all time best from any manufacturer. Uh, this is a really great kit and there's a lot to go over. So let's just get right into it. Built on the extremely popular Vanquish VS410 platform, this truck has an extensive list of all new features that truly make this a very original release despite it carrying over some parts from previous models. It does carry over the chassis design. So the VS410 chassis design, very similar here. Uh, there's a lot of existing parts that uh, will look quite familiar when you look at this chassis from the underside. Uh, but that isn't to say that there isn't a ton of all new stuff here. And we're gonna go through all of it together because uh, it's important that you know what's new. There's so many things to talk about uh, on this truck and it's hard to not start right with this really great looking body. Uh, but we're going to actually pass that over and flip the truck over and look at the underside first because that's where I think the most notable new part is. And that is the new set of Vanquish F10 plastic portal axles. These molded plastic axles uh, called the F10 include all centered gears throughout. It's all machine gearing. Uh, there's not a single pot metal gear in anything from this Vanquish kit. Heavy duty bearings beefed up plastic housings and you get a set of brass cylinders that sleeve each of the axle shafts so these tubes are basically reinforced with a brass tube and uh, what that's going to offer you is a bunch of added weight and protection against snapping a housing uh, because yeah they're plastic that said this plastic is of the same quality that you've come to expect from the rest of the vs410 plastics so a very strong rigid yet still got enough flex to it to take a lot of abuse. Like I said, this is a portal axle. So um, not my first choice by any means, but uh, certainly uh, a great looking axle and looks really great under this chassis. The biggest innovation after them being plastic is the fact that they do have that sleeving inside uh, for the extra strength and rigidity. Uh, it's really cool to see that. There is so much overbuilt areas of plastic on these axles that it really does speak to Vanquish's quality. And that's something that I don't think anybody here can deny. Vanquish has always been a very high quality company and seeing all of that design and extra effort put into making a really great plastic axle just speaks volumes about this company. Uh, the axle outputs, uh, we should mention, are an M5, so there's a little bit of added strength there as well. Uh, definitely going to be a lot stronger than, say, a standard axle from any of the other manufacturers who all use an M4 on their outputs. Uh, the front axle is that offset design to keep that front drive line all uh, straight and in line with the transfer case uh, on the VFD transmission, and we'll get into that VFD in a few minutes here. Uh, universals on those axles as well, delivering 49 degrees of steering. That is pretty intense on the steering angle and uh, really shows that this truck is built to perform and not just look good, but also to perform at a very high caliber. Uh, like I said, they are a portal axle. I'm a little disappointed to see that on a new release, uh, but I do understand that's what the market will bear. And uh, I'm sure we will see a straight axle at some point in the future, hopefully with this same body style. That would look really great. Uh, initially, you might be thinking to yourself, well, wait a second, this is a Vanquish truck. Shouldn't it have machined aluminum axles? And while I don't disagree with you, it should, uh, there's a very good reason why I think Vanquish went to a plastic axle housing, and that's mainly to bring the cost down. For the average consumer, the Vanquish products trucks are not cheap. They're not cheap for anybody, for that matter. Uh, and to bring this kit price down to a more palatable level for a much wider audience, I think is a really strong, smart idea from Vanquish. 
they're looking to not just get the high-end consumer, but also someone who wants a great truck that is willing to upgrade later on. Obviously, they're going to offer a machined axle for this kit. There's no reason not to. But to get into that price point where lots more people can afford to get this truck and get it going right out of the box, I think is a really smart move. So kudos to them for taking the time to develop a really great, really strong, really high performance axle. Good work. I guess also, if you wanted to look at it from a pure performance standpoint, I do think that a plastic axle is probably going to give you a slightly better performing uh, truck sliding over an obstacle than a metal axle. So, I mean, while you lose a little bit of weight down low, uh, you do gain it with those uh, brass sleeves that they've included, and uh, you're going to gain a ton of performance sliding over a rock. So. I think it's a really great setup, and I'm glad to see Vanquish taking some uh, different approaches to how to put a kit together. And ultimately, if you're going to break apart, it's certainly cheaper to replace plastic than it is machined aluminum. Another good alternative benefit to going to a plastic axle. One other thing to note on that rear axle, you do get the uh, aluminum uh, oil cap that is included, and there is a very nice tool that's also included to help install that so you don't get it all scratched up when you're putting it in. Now that we've started at probably the most visible and uh, most interesting change on the VS410 Phoenix, let's start to move up and see what else we can discover about the rest of the truck. Because this chassis is very similar in terms of the layout and some of the construction elements uh, as the other VS410 models, I will link right up here to a series of videos that will uh, kind of give you the lowdown on that chassis kit. There's a lot to take in, so I wouldn't fault you for pausing and going back and watching some of these sections again. Okay, so moving on from the axles, uh, next up we've got stainless steel uh, links throughout, uh, steering, drag link, pan hard, uh, they're all stainless uh, steel construction, very strong, uh, very beefy, and uh, do a great job of getting yourself slid over an obstacle rather than hooking up on it. I do like that they do stainless uh, and not just like a, an aluminum. Uh, link because I do think it also brings a little bit more weight down low. Stainless steel pivot balls throughout as well. Uh, every single contact point between a link and another part does have these stainless uh, steel pivot balls. So uh, also great to see that as well. Okay, moving on from there. These are the new SC8E shocks. And uh, these shocks are a eight millimeter bore, uh, aluminum construction, plastic caps with a bleeder screw and assemble really, really nicely. I've had these together now for a couple of weeks and there's no sign of leaking whatsoever. They are a really great looking shock, uh, offer a lot of good travel. For a single spring uh, emulsion shock, I think they're pretty darn good and uh, went together beautifully, I might add too. When I did build them, and there will be an entire build video that goes along with this release, uh, when I built them, I did use some associated green slime around some of the rings just to make sure that I keep all that oil where it's supposed to be, inside the shock and not all over my desk. Now for this next portion, let's get this body off so we can get a good look at the chassis and all the major and extremely exciting changes that have been made underneath. So, uh, now that we've got the body off, you get a good, nice overhead view of the layout of the chassis, and things are looking pretty similar to some of the VS410s from the past, be it the Pro, the Ultra, or even the Origin. There's a lot in common here. Uh, fuel cells in the same spot. Uh, this whole center uh, block section that is uh, used for chassis bracing is here uh, in the same spot. Uh, shock towers are the same. Uh, there are new front inner fenders that do have a position for rock lights. Those are pretty cool. These are molded plastic as well, not Lexan anymore. Uh, the sliders are also of a different profile to match the new body, and there's different front and rear bumpers. The basic layout of where the VFD transmission and transfer case sits is also the same. But you will know that there is an additional servo here, and we'll get into why that is in a second. Uh, for this build, I went with Tekken Electronics throughout uh, using their RX4, a ROCK 412 3100 KV brushless sensored motor, a T440 steering servo, and two T120 servos for the other shifting duties. Uh, the battery tray is now molded plastic and in a different location than it was on the other trucks as well. Uh, but let's talk about what all these extra servos are for, and this is where things get interesting. We've got a servo for DIG, and that of course 
hasn't changed very much since any iteration uh, of the VFD transmission. Uh, it is a mechanical dig. It works really, really well uh, and completely locks out the rear diff. Uh, so there is no movement whatsoever uh, from the rear. Uh, what dig essentially allows you to do is use it to uh, either descend an obstacle more effectively, uh, turn on a much more aggressive angle than you would normally be able to get because those back wheels are dragging. The truck basically pivots itself around its own axis, which is a pretty uh, incredible way of seeing a truck move around. It's pretty cool. It's called the VFD Twin now. So what the main difference on the VFD Twin is offering you overdrive, but it's a selectable overdrive. And this is very, very cool. In previous iterations of the VFD transmission, you could have a 6% overdrive, which was stock, or you could swap the gears and go to a much higher percentage of uh, overdrive. Now, Vanquish has built that all into one system. So you install both sets of gears, and then there is a servo actuated lever within the transmission that allows you to select between that 6% overdrive and 33% overdrive. So uh, while you're going to the trailhead, you've got your 6% overdrive, you get up to a really crazy uh, obstacle, you're trying to get yourself up over it, shift it into 33% overdrive without having to open up the transfer case or move any gears around. You can just shift right into that way more aggressive overdrive and get yourself up over that obstacle. It is a very cool system and it's all part of the VFD twin. Uh, more specifically, that is a 6.5% overdrive on our uh, less aggressive one and a 33% overdrive on our very aggressive one. It is so cool to be able to do that. Not only have they got those two overdrives, there's also a middle section on that transfer case that allows you to run in a freewheel or a rear two-wheel drive only mode. So if you wanted to, you know, save gas <laughs> on your regular highway driving, you've got that two-wheel drive option as well. And that's pretty neat to see. Uh, both the overdrive and the dig both function on this same lever system. So there is a rubber gasket and a uh, link arm that attaches to the servo and uh, moves the gears in and out of place to give you those new options. It's a really cool way of doing it. It's all selectable on the fly via an auxiliary channel. So you're going to want to have a multi-channel radio for this truck. Uh, definitely something I would recommend highly. Uh, I've got it set up with my Spectrum DX5 Pro uh, running the SR515 receiver, which gives me five channels. This is a pretty unique system and it is definitely something that I'm really interested in and I'm really glad to see that Vanquish took this VFD to the next level. I didn't really know where trucks were gonna go and to see the fact that they've been able to take this truck and do something new with it is pretty spectacular. All of this wizardry is done via uh, these, these uh, metal shifting arms and uh, there's a pivot point in the middle uh, where the two arms meet and it's uh, kind of sandwiched together with a brass pin uh, and uh, it's all actuated by servos with stainless links on them. So there's not a lot of failure points here. And I think that kind of brings me up to uh, one of my main points, and, and that is complexity. And uh, for all intents and purposes, this is a fairly complex truck. I mean, you were adding another servo into a, a myriad of other electronics here to uh, gain another uh, level of um, driving dynamic. Uh, and I think my main complaint with trucks in the past that used all of these servos was that they were micro servos or mini servos. They were of a dubious quality for sure. And any actuation that they were doing was done through cables, which can loosen and spread over time. And you're not going to get that same kind of uh, reliability that you would from a system like this, where we're using full size servos and links attached to rigid mount points. So this, while being more complex, and I do admit that, I think you're going to see a lot less failure rate here because you are the one choosing the electronics. Those rubber gaskets uh, built into the VFD here are designed around keeping the, uh, the servo actuated arms clear of debris. I think that's probably a point where you want to do a little bit of maintenance every time you take the truck out just to make sure there's no big chunks of crud getting into the transmission or the transfer case. Uh, but it does a pretty good job of keeping everything clear, so it's probably not something I would worry about 
in the short term. Long term and maintaining it, you'll probably definitely want to take a look at that. So while I do think that there is a, a another level of complexity by adding another servo into this mix, because of these rigid mount points and the way that it's been engineered, it's a lot different from my original gripes from say the TRX4 full function kit that has all the servos for uh, locking and unlocking diffs and two speeds and whatnot. Uh, for the most part, because all these rigid mounting points exist, there's a lot less chance of failure. So, uh, and because it's a kit, you're also the one choosing your electronics. So you're already at an advantage by not having uh, these smaller, less powerful servos doing uh, the bulk of the work for you. If this level of complexity isn't something that you want in your truck, let's just say you want it to be a hardcore crawler. Well, Vanquish thought of that and they made sure to create a mount point in the actual shifting mechanism to lock out mechanically this completely. So let's say you just wanna have 33% overdrive all the time. You can lock that arm into place so you don't even need the servo. Of course, you can't change it as, as easily. It can still be changed with just removing a grub screw and replacing a grub screw. Uh, that does give you the option to run the truck just as is. And of course, if you don't want dig, lock it into four wheel drive and then you'll never have dig and you never have to worry about anything breaking because everything is locked into place. If you are a casual trail truck guy, just use a 6% overdrive. If you are a hardcore guy and you want to have that option, but no other options, just stick it into 33% overdrive. If you want to have all the options, toss a servo on there and shift it to your heart's content. I'm really blown away by this bit of technology. It's very cool. And patent pending, I might add. One final note on the VFD, this is the first VFD transmission to offer a slipper clutch. So there is a set of pads on that spur that you can adjust uh, with a nut to, to offer more or less slip, which I think is a pretty nice feature, uh, but I've locked mine out almost completely. This body and interior were designed in conjunction with James Knight from Knight Customs, so the interior uh, is very similar to the ones in the previous uh, round of trucks, the Pro, the Ultra, the Origin, uh, and fit a Tamiya-style bruiser driver really, really well. Uh, the seats were kind of designed around that character, so he'll fit in there really well, as you can see. Um, and uh, just kind of looks quite appropriate, I might say. Uh, it's a nice looking interior. There's some plastic molded items like the steering wheel, steering column, uh, shifting uh, shifting uh, uh, boot, and uh, uh, nice, nice depth seats that will allow for that bruiser character, like I said earlier. I did have to extend the steering wheel um, kind of position uh, just to fit his hands a little bit better, but I just put a little bit of steel brake line in there to make it uh, extend out a little bit and uh, I think it looks really good that way. Uh, lots of nice molded details. Uh, you get door handles, wipers, uh, this really cool front grille, and there's also an inner grille structure as well. New front bumper, nice short little profile thing, matches the body contour really nicely. Does have a fair lead. Uh, you can still mount a servo winch on this truck uh, right next to the steering servo if that's what you're into and you wanna have something to uh, pull yourself up over obstacles if you're looking to try to do some competition crawling with this truck. I think that's a great addition. Uh, on the rear here, we've got a nice caged out uh, sort of tube bed, if you will. Uh, these panels on the side can come off, does not need to run them, so if you wanted to have a more truggy style look, you could definitely do that. Uh, the rear bumper integrates nicely into the cage as well, and everything uh, fits really, really nicely. I think it looks great. There's uh, still, you can still see the fuel cell in the back there, and there's probably a way to mount a spare tire if that was something you were interested in as well. Uh, what's innovative about this is that now, uh, rather than having any body posts, um, obviously there's no body posts sticking out anywhere on the, on the hood or on the body anywhere, uh, this whole truck does have the ability to pivot, uh, pivot forward. There is a uh, post that uh, sticks through the front assembly, uh, goes through the body, and uh, pivots on, a, on the nose there. So good way to get at your electronics if, uh, if you need to on the trail. And then there are two hidden body clips that hold the body uh, on the chassis down here at the bottom. I really like this resto mod style body that Vanquish came up with. It's very cruiser inspired, but not licensed. It is of their own design. 
uh, with some nods to the past, which I think is pretty cool. It definitely has a very unique look, especially with the way I've painted it with the white roof and some stripes on the side. <laughs> and the front grille definitely uh, suggests a certain model as well, which I think is pretty neat. Uh, that grille will accept uh, Q-series LEDs, uh, or Incision's LED light set will also work up front there. You can also add your own LED light kit if you're so inclined. I painted up the body using On Point paint. Uh, it is sort of the Canadian equivalent of the US Traxxas paint that you can get. I find it comes in a really awesome range of colors, uh, blends really well with others, doesn't bleed through tape, uh, and just looks great. It's sort of a navy blue with a turquoise and light blue stripe that I did. And then I uh, masked off some uh, sponsor logos on the back here and uh, put the Vanquish wordmark right up front here. I just thought it kind of added to that sort of classic kind of cruiser look. And uh, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. The wheels and tires are carryovers from other Vanquish uh, models. Uh, these are the VXTs. Uh, they come in a 4.65 inch tall tire uh, on a, on a 1.9 inch wheel. Uh, this is a plastic and metal beadlock wheel. They're the KMC uh, brand uh, and they do fine. Uh, the tires themselves, I'm not a big fan. They're not my favorite. Uh, and in fact, I've already mounted up a set of KMC Roswells on some MTRs from uh, RC4 wheel drive. And, that's what those are gonna look like right there. I think that's a really nice combo, if I'm honest, and kind of uh, adds to the vintage look of the whole truck. But once the main review and run video is done, we're gonna swap those wheels and tires over and uh, see how much better of a performer it'll be with those. The sticker sheets are pretty fantastic. Uh, you get all the like sort of window decals and stuff. You get a couple of SBG shields, uh, license plates, some Vanquish and some Phoenix logos there. And then a whole other separate sheet with a bunch more Phoenix logos and some crawling stick man in some sort of stance. A couple of Night Customs logos and other sponsor logos along the bottom there. Overall, it's a really beautiful kit. I just, I, I love it. I love the engineering that goes into a Vanquish product product. <laughs> I do like saying it twice like that. And I just, uh, I think that they've really kind of nailed it with this release. I, I, without, you know, obviously it's still very clean and hasn't been run yet, but I can just tell based on previous Vanquish models that this is going to be a very good performing truck. While there are some nice add-ons in the box to uh, kind of detail out and scale out the truck itself, I was a little disappointed to see that there were no uh, rear view mirrors that were included. And I'm sure that came from more of a performance perspective than a forgetful perspective. Uh, it would have been nice to see an option there. I think that would have really kind of like kitted out the whole look and really just kind of completed that for sure. Uh, but speaking of uh, exterior accessories, my friend James from Night Customs is already working on some accessories to go on the VS410 Phoenix. Uh, and uh, there's going to be a host of things. He's got a rear roll cage in the works. He's got a uh, snorkel in the works. He's got a light bar in the works. Uh, I'm sure he's going to do rear view mirrors. Uh, one piece that I've already printed out is this intercooler radiator. And uh, there's actually, you can see there's a mount point on the back there. There's mount points inside the inner grill structure to put this inside. And I think that's going to look really cool. And Vanquish was sure to include a mask. So you could mask off that inner portion of Lexan. So you could get this radiator to actually be seen once you install it. Which is pretty darn cool. It's going to be pretty rad. <laughs> For that radiator. It just is a really great looking truck. And uh, I think it's... Um, it's one of those things that, you know, the sum of the parts is sort of like this sort of evolution that we've seen from the VS410 line. When the Origin came out, it was still using a host of things from the original SCX10s. And, you know, now we've got a whole transmission and transfer case designed from Vanquish, and it's pretty spectacular once you see it all kind of working in harmony. Here's a little bonus uh, running footage that I wanted to include just so you got an idea of how this truck sounds and looks on the trail. Uh, you can see in many of these cases I'm using the 33% overdrive and there will be uh, a full running video that goes along with this release in the coming days. But uh, for now, enjoy this uh, quiet moment.
Speaking to the construction of the kit, I actually found this to be one of the easier kits from Vanquish to assemble. The instruction manual is very well detailed, uh, not a lot of errors that I was able to find. Uh, there were a few spelling mistakes. Uh, but I'll let that slide, probably a Josh problem more than anything. Like most good manuals, any of the diagrams are actually in the one-to-one. -one. So when you're assembling your links, you'll know what size links you've got because these are actually how long they are in real life. Yeah, I don't remember anything specifically being of merit to warrant uh, going over again. Uh, a nice thing about the Vanquish kit is that they do include their own thread lock and their own grease. And this grease, where is that stuff? And this grease is fantastic. Uh, I've never used anything quite like this, and I'm pretty sure that Vanquish uh, has some sort of proprietary uh, usage on it, but it's amazing. Nice and tacky, without kind of going everywhere. It stays on the part that you greased, which is really great. Uh, so nice to see that included as well. I've built a few VS410s in my day, so there was a lot that was very familiar to me. Uh, enough different though that it was a challenging build and because I took my time and filmed every single step we will put together a sort of like highlight reel of all the build steps that are different on the VS410 Phoenix uh, which I think is probably a good idea. We'll also do a standalone running video but uh, it's always good to see the more intricate portions of a build so you can follow along if you're building one at home. And if you think that's a good idea Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. I have to say, I'm really thrilled that the Scale Builders Guild logo is on the box and on the manual. I've been watching the development of this truck for some time now, so not everything is a complete surprise to me, but seeing how it's all come together into this one cohesive kit that just looks amazing and performs just as amazing as it looks is really special to see. And I'm honored to have the Scale Builders Guild shield on the box and on the sticker sheet. It means an awful lot to me to have that included. Uh, to see that on here again is a real honor. And uh, yeah, I'm just blown away with this truck. I really am. I don't think there's much else to say other than you should probably get one because it's fantastic. If you were to have a VS410 Phoenix, would you option it out completely like I've done here? Or would you lock out the overdrive? And would you use the dig? Put your comments down below. You know I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of them as I can. All right, I think that's gonna do it. I've got an intercooler radiator to install and some incision LED lights before I hit the trails again. So, thank you so much to Vanquish for sending this in advance of the release so I had plenty of time to put it together and play with it. It's been a blast. So my thanks to you guys. All right, so we're gonna do a standalone running video and we will follow that up with a detailed build video. Uh, but I think that's gonna do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.